Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We're going to be building a boilerplate for single page applications. And the idea here is to provide a template which you can use when building your own applications. This will have a server side component as well as a client side. This server will incorporate a static file server as well as an API server. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna bootstrap a Dart project using the Dart tool. So I'll run that create, I'll specify a template and we want the console full template and the name of the directory, we want to generate these files in. So I'll call it spa underscore server. So this will go ahead and create that directory and chuck the relevant files in there. I'm gonna open the spa server and open the pubspec.yaml file. We're gonna be adding a couple of dependencies. So specifically what we want is path as well as shelf router and shelf static shelf router allows us to create a server with routes it's similar to express and then shelf static allows us to create a static file server we can cd into our spa server and then i run pub get so now our dependencies have been updated i'm going to open the spa server file and we're going to import the relevant libraries from the packages we installed and we'll create our first shelf server by creating a router object I'll mark this main function with a sync and on this router object we'll define our first route and we can retrieve a handle to our request and I'll return a text response that says my single page app and to run our server we need to invoke io.serve and then we'll pass in our router object our address will be localhost and our port will be 8080 this should be familiar if you've looked at the shelf router tutorial that I did. If you haven't, go take a look and we can run the server. Okay, so at this point I should be able to curl to our server, which gives us this response. An important consideration when working with single page applications is that routing is handled on the client. To accommodate for that, we need to ensure that get requests by default return an index HTML file. So we're going to implement this in two parts. So firstly, we need to add a path variable. And the name of our variable will simply be name and then add a pipe and then we'll use regex to capture any string. And then if we want that reference, we can capture that as the second argument here just to confirm that this works. I'll run that server again. And then when I go to the root, I get that and if I type anything afterwards, I still get my single page app. Let's modify the response to return an actual index.html file. I'll create a new folder on the spa server called public. And in public, I'll add an index.html file. I'll add some HTML. And then what we can do is we'll import the .io library which will allow us to read our index.html file. Then we'll invoke the reader string sync method. So then in our response, we'll return this index file and also we'll set the correct headers. So the browser treats it like HTML file. And let's save that. And let me run the server again. And this time I'll open this in the browser, which gives us that. And what happens when I add some random routes that still returns that even with a slash afterwards and still gives us that so next let's look at how we can handle static files because right now if we come to our index file and we add a link pointing to our style sheet and let's create that style sheet and we'll add some simple styles and attempting to access the style sheet still returns the index.html file because of that catch all route. What we need to do is to define another route. And then for our specific route, we'll call assets. And then we'll have a path variable here. And then we're going to invoke the create static handler function. And the folder we're going to point to with all our assets is the public directory that we created. Since we've got this assets section of the path, We'll need to mimic that here. So on the public, I'll create a new folder, call it assets, and then we'll drag in our style sheet. 
Then in our index.html, we need to update that here, like so. And then let's go ahead and restart the server. And then when we try to access our asset, we, we get this as our response. And what happens when we come to locals 8080? Okay, our style has not been applied, which I think we need to do rel style sheet. And now reloading it gives us that. The next thing we're going to look at is how to get our API server set up. So to do that, I'm going to come to the lib directory and in here I'll create a new folder called source. And then in this new folder, I'll create my first API server. Let's call it user API. I'll import the shelf libraries we're going to be working with. And then let's create a class called user API. And in here we'll have a getter, which will return a router object. Let's create our router object and then define our first route. And for this example, we're just going to return a simple JSON with a key called users and a list of values. Let's set the correct headers for this response. All right, and we'll just return the router object. And next we need to export this out of our library file, which is spa underscore server. So I'll get rid of this and we'll export source user API, which means in spa server, we can import it here like so. And then I'll just get rid of this alias and we'll do app dot mount. And the prefix is users and the value here is user API dot router. And to improve the experience restarting our server, I'm just going to add a launch configuration. I'll create a launch.json file. And then in our launch.json, I'm going to add a new key called program and we'll specify the Dart file we are going to be running. So doing this now, we should be able to run our server by clicking play. And the address is already in use because I forgot to kill it in the terminal. Okay, let's do that again. All right, so our server is running. Let's pull up our browser. So refreshing should still work fine. Let's try and access our style sheet. That still works fine. And we'll access our users API server, which gives us a list of users. Also shelf allows us to log out details of requests that come in. To do that, we can define middleware functionality to our server. So I'll create a variable called handler and I'll define a pipeline object. And on this pipeline, we're going to add middleware and we'll just invoke log requests, which is one of the middleware that comes with shelf. And then we'll also invoke add handler, which receives our router instance. So now we can pass our handler object in here and then I'll restart the server. Then if I open the debug console and then visit the server, then we get this logging information. Log requests is customizable. It takes in a logger. Another consideration one may come across when building single page apps is um, the idea of cause or cross origin resource sharing, which we need to define when accessing this server from a different domain. So an example will be when developing on your client app locally, you normally would launch it from a different domain. For instance, if you are launching a dev server created using Create React app or an Angular Dart project, which also runs a different server from this server here. So to add calls support, we'll invoke add middleware. And then in here, we'll invoke the create middleware function. This takes in a request handler and a response handler. So we'll define both of them. And then the cause headers we're going to be working with are mainly these ones. So the origin to allow access from the methods and headers. We'll check for an options request, which is because the browser normally sends what's known as a pre-flight request to the server in order to get these details. And it will use that to determine whether to continue with the full request or not. I'll add a link in the description if you wish to know more about that. But for now, what we're going to do is return response.ok and it'll just be an empty string. But then the headers in our response will be our course headers. 
And then in here, we'll just return null and the request will just move on to the next function, the next method in the pipeline. Okay, so for our response, we'll return the response again, but then we want to change the header information and we want to add our course headers. So if I save this and I restart the server and then we look at our browser with the network panel. So when I refresh and we look at our request, we see that in the response headers, we've got our course headers displayed here. And that should be the same for the other requests that are made as well. So the last thing I'm going to do before I finish up this video is just to clean this up a little bit. Create a new file in source called utils. I'll import the shelf library. And then I'll define a method called handle course. So that means we can clean this up by copying the logic in here. And then I'll return create middleware and we'll export utils. So that means in here we can invoke handle calls and that way this file looks much more cleaner. And let's test this one more time. And then we still got that here. And it's also quite common that for single page apps, there's normally a base tag set in the header with a href set to a root path. So in fact, if we leave it like this and then refresh it, everything should still work fine. And let's confirm that we see the base tag. Yeah, we've seen it here as well. And then lastly, let's look at our test file and we can write some tests here, for instance, to test our API. So to get set up with testing, we will need a HTTP client that will communicate with our server. So I can go ahead and, and add the HTTP package under dev dependencies and then run pubget afterwards. Let's import that in here. And then for our first test, we'll just check that our API server, for instance, returns a 200 response. So then in here, we can perform a get call to locals 8080. And then we can perform some assertions on our response. So in this case, we can check the status code matches 200. So if we go ahead and then we run this test by doing that run test, we get a passing test. And in fact, with these status codes, we can use the HTTP status class in that IO. So we do HTTP status dot okay, which saves us from memorizing the numbers. And also rather than having get, I will alias this as HTTP so that I can do HTTP dot get. So if we run the test again, it should still pass. Okay. All right. So I think we have enough here to get started off with. I'm going to end the tutorial here. If you enjoy this one, be sure to smash the like button. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on future updates. If you've got any questions or wish to give any feedback, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.